My clean diet was hurting my gains, but not for the reasons that you'd expect. Everyone knows about the diet that you can't stick to because you don't like, right? But what about the diet that you can't stick to because you like it too much? Or at least, you think you do. That's exactly the predicament that I found myself in when I was binging on chicken, broccoli, and rice, unable to stop, looking at the plate, and wondering what the heck is wrong with me. I guess I just really love chicken, broccoli, and rice, right? Well, yes, but no. I got some very surprising insights recently on my food sensitivities and allergies that have really shed a light on why I might have been binging on healthy foods and what was wrong with my diet and how I was even hurting my gains. This new information has helped me change my diet and what I've learned might just help you make your diet that much easier to stick to and that much more beneficial for your body composition. So I'm going to be going over the results of my food sensitivity and allergy tests, which I found out from York tests. They are HSA and FSA eligible, so if you've got some extra cash from work, this may be something to check out. Comment down below, do you have an FSA and are you going to spend some money on this before the year is over? Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by York Test in any way, shape, or form. This is just something that I did. You're free to use any other provider. This is just the provider that I used. So you might be asking yourself, why would I take this test in the first place? Well, for one, I did have some extra FSA dollars. But in all seriousness, I'd been suffering from a few issues. Number one was digestive issues. I've been struggling since I was a child with IBS, and I've cut out a lot of problematic foods in the process of trying to cure it. Now this includes your regular culprits like fatty foods, spicy foods, soy, dairy, gluten. But I wanted to see if there were any healthy foods that I'd been eating that might be causing issues or might be causing me to uh, overeat. Number two was anxiety. I've had a lot of issues with anxiety over the years, and considering that most of the serotonin that we produce is formed in the gut, I thought it was only natural that I should check out if any of the foods that I've been eating were maybe causing my anxiety by creating gut dysbiosis and messing up my gut-brain connection. And number three was hormones. We know about my low testosterone from previous videos, link here if you haven't checked it out, but I've also had problems with an underperforming thyroid. Now a potential cause of thyroid issues is leaky gut, which is a weakening of the intestinal walls, allowing bacteria and toxins to essentially leach into your bloodstream from your gut. This isn't an official medical diagnosis, this is more of a holistic thought process that has occurred, but as someone who's trying to heal themselves in a holistic manner with a combination of science, intuition, and what I've learned about the nervous system, I'm certainly open to this idea that certain things that I was eating might have caused gut permeability and then affected my thyroid downstream. Now the testing process itself wasn't too bad, but there were a lot of times where it felt tedious and I was getting paranoid that I had messed up something with the sample and it wasn't going to come out right. First off, I had to go online and create my account and activate my York test tests. York test tests. Then to get ready for the tests, I had to drink a glass of water, wait 30 minutes. I also had to wash my hands in warm water, then squeeze my hands really hard, and then do a bunch of arm circles, which was hilarious to my sister who was the one filming this video. I chose to do the food sensitivity test first. In this test, you basically prick your finger and try to saturate an absorbent wand that they give you completely with your blood. Now, I don't have the greatest blood flow on earth with circulation issues, let me tell you guys, that wand soaks up a lot of blood. I was there for several minutes trying to get it to saturate and you're not supposed to squeeze your finger to help it. But after a ton of time and a ton of effort, we had to kind of just say, screw it. And I was definitely pushing on my finger to get blood out. I don't think this impacted the sample, but full disclaimer, that's what I did. And it was quite difficult. Afterwards, I sealed up the tube, put it in a postal bag, and it was ready to go off and be sent to York test. For the food allergy test, this one was a little different. I had to prick my finger, place four drops of blood in circles on a piece of absorbent paper, and then wait for it to dry before I sent it off. So now for the good part. What did I learn from these tests? I'm gonna start off with the food allergy test first because this is the one that's more severe. For anyone who doesn't know, which includes me, I didn't know, I had to look this up. A food allergy is an actual immune reaction to something that you eat 
and can be potentially life-threatening, whereas a food sensitivity will generally just cause a mild reaction and could affect how you're feeling, your mood, etc. So from our results, we can see that the main offenders are egg whites, cow's milk, and Nutella. So growing up, I was a vegetarian. So as a vegetarian, some of my main protein sources were egg whites and dairy products. And hazelnuts were of course part of my favorite spread, Nutella, because who doesn't like Nutella? I cut these foods out before my nervous system collapsed because I just couldn't stop eating them. I literally for years had been told egg whites are great, you know, it's a great food to diet on, Greek yogurt is so satiating, it's a great food to diet on, and I could not stop myself from eating tons of egg whites and tons of Greek yogurt. I mean, I could polish off an entire tub of Greek yogurt in a night, no problem. I would pay for it later digestively like anyone, but I couldn't stop myself from eating it once I took even one spoonful. And that was something that was concerning to me because eventually those calories do add up. I also noticed that a lot of the foods that I thought I didn't like as much, like salmon and olives and even white rice, were things that I weren't really as allergic to. So I recognize that salmon, olives, these are also satiating foods, but I feel like it's worth mentioning considering the fact that I was able to binge eat on things that are considered even more satiating, such as chicken breast, egg whites, Greek yogurt. As for the food sensitivity test, I found this to be a lot more comprehensive, and I was really interested in the high reactivity ones, which you can see from the legend are highlighted in red, with moderate activity being highlighted in orange. So again, here we see for high reactivity, we've got egg whites and cow's milk, but now we've added in things like string beans, pineapple, wheat, gluten. So again, here I thought how strange because my favorite fruit to eat has always been pineapple, especially when I'm stressed, when I'm at the grocery store and I don't know what to choose, I'm going to choose the pineapple. And one of my favorite snacks used to be pineapple with cottage cheese, which I'm now realizing is the most highly inflammatory combination I could have given myself. And I could take down buckets of this stuff. As for the wheat intolerance, it's strange, but I've also always found things like whole grains to be less satiating to me than the non-whole grains, such as white rice versus brown rice or whole wheat pasta versus white pasta. The yeast intolerance makes me glad that I quit bread as well because bread just seems to be the number one offender in every single way and to be honest I think I would suggest to a lot of people that they quit eating bread because here in the states we get breads that are mixed with xanthan gum, food additives, preservatives, artificial colorings and dyes, even a lot of the organic breads will have a lot of these added ingredients and could be harming your guts even if you're not intolerant to some of these substances. But all these results got me thinking, why are my favorite foods all the things that I'm allergic to? So I did some research and I found this study in the Journal of Allergy, which tested serotonin levels in humans and guinea pigs after they'd been exposed to an allergic reaction. So basically what they found in the humans is that when they were exposed to allergenic substances, things that the scientists knew that these humans were allergic to, they exhibited more serotonin coming from the gut. Now, as we know, when we're feeling stressed, Cortisol is ramping up very high and our adrenals are going crazy and the easiest way to tone down cortisol that we know as humans is to reach for food. Now we also know that serotonin directly reduces the amount of cortisol that we produce. So the easiest way for us to reduce a cortisol spike, especially one that's higher than we're used to, such as when we're very stressed, is to reach for foods that we're allergic to and stimulate more serotonin production in the gut. So my thoughts on this are that we don't actually like the foods that we think we like. I think that in today's modern world with constant stress, we're always just choosing things that effectively cancel out our cortisol levels. That's just my thoughts on it. But comment down below if you disagree or agree with my logic, or if you have any foods that you also weirdly can't stop eating and think you might be allergic to. Now, would I recommend this test? I think if you've got a bit of money to spare, or if you're dealing with hormonal problems, anxiety, gut issues, or you're on a diet and you can't stick to it, you don't know why, or you're just a regular person who wants to figure out any food allergy sensitivities, then I think that this is something that you should take. If I only had to choose one, 
I would say choose the food sensitivity test because I found it to be much more comprehensive with the list of foods it provided while including the foods that I was actually allergic to and not just sensitive to. If you're interested in buying the same tests I did, I'll leave a link in the description to York Test website so you can check it out for yourself. So with that, I hope you found this video entertaining. Let me know down below. Did you learn something new? Is there more content for me that you'd like to see or a topic addressed in particular? And if you like me and my content, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you can stay up to date when I post new content and follow me on my journey as I recover from burnout. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.